I am Brother Stephen Elabo, welcoming you to the Life Bible Church, Charlottesville, United States, a place where the undiluted Word of God is being preached. You are about to listen to our general superintendent, Pastor W.F. Kumoye, as a comfort to share the mind of God with you and your family. I want you to be ready to pick up your pen and your paper and jot down important messages as they will do you good. God bless you and remain blessed. And everybody said, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your people. We thank you for the leadership of this state. We're asking, O oh Lord, that everyone will have the touch of the Lord tonight in Jesus' name. Lead your people to that promised land. All the good things you have for every one of us. You bring them into our lives even from tonight in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you very much. You can sit down the beginning of a journey. Have you ever noticed in your life the end of January is the beginning of February. The end of the period of darkness in your life is the beginning of light that will shine brighter and brighter. What I'm talking about tonight, 365 days of extraordinary miracles. All the days of the coming year, if you believe, you will see the glory of God. 365 days of extraordinary miracles. Deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 12. You will see what the Lord is saying here. A land which the Lord thy God careth for, the eyes of the Lord thy God are always upon it from the beginning of the year even unto the end of the year. The children of Israel were in a journey and they were going to a land of promise. They were wondering what will it be we are conscious of the past. We know about the present. But for the future, we're ignorant. We know where we're coming from. We know where we are today. But we don't know what is there in the future. We can tell you the geography of Egypt. We can tell you the wilderness experience at the present time. But we are wondering what is going to happen in the coming year, in the following year. As they thought about it, there were some of them that were ignorant. And they said, we well, remember the cucumber in Egypt. The onions of Egypt. For them, it's like, why don't we stay there? All the people were saying, we know what we get in the wilderness where we are. The water out of the rock. The manna that is coming from heaven. And the big tree that were having over the Amalekites. 
Some of them said, let's go back to Egypt and stay there. The past for them were sure of that. Other people are saying, why don't we stay here? The rock is there, the water is coming out. Why don't we stay here? And then the word of God came to them. The past may be good, the future will be better. The present may bring water out of the rock, the future will bring honey out of the rock. That's why the Lord came to assure them. And he said, a land which the Lord himself careth for. The eyes of the Lord your God always upon that land. From the very beginning of the year, even unto the end of the year, he will care for you. Hey, look at verse 21. That your days may be multiplied. And the days of your children in the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give there. Look at the last part of that verse 21. It says, where you are going. The future that is stretched out before you. As the days of heaven upon the earth. I thought somebody there was shouting amen. As the days of heaven upon the earth. That's where you get the 365 days of extraordinary miracles. There are three things we're going to talk about. You know, there are people that think of preaching as just talking. But the preaching you are hearing tonight is a staircase, step one, step two, step three, and then you enter. The points I'm going to give you, there are points for you to say, yes, step one, I put my leg there. Step two, I put my leg there. Step three, I put my leg there. And I usher you into 365 days of extraordinary miracle. Number one, the point of entry. If a room is filled with treasure, all the good, good things you're looking for in life is in this chamber. If you may know it, you may rejoice, you may tell everybody around, look at that chamber there. Treasures are there for me. You may shout about it. You may be jumping around. Those treasures there will not be yours until, number one, the point of entry. You may say, it's a wonderful message. I like that verse of scripture. Wonderful. I didn't know that was in the Bible before. All that shouting, all that rejoicing will not do anything. Number one, take that step. The point of entry. Entry. 
Do you know there are many people that they just they sample messages? I like that. I appreciate that. That's wonderful. But they never take the step. I'm not preaching to just like that. I'm coming to you to tell you there is something waiting for you. You must enter. There's somebody there. You will enter. What are you? I'm looking for you. I'm looking for you. This coming year, you, you will see wonderful. Because extraordinary miracles will come your way. Number two, the path to excellence. You know, as you enter, you will not be stagnant in this coming year. You'll be going from faith to faith. From grace to grace. From glory to glory. Where we find you in January, by February, you will move forward. And you must never look back. You must never turn back. Have you seen somebody riding motorcycle and his hands are on the handles and then he's looking back? He wants to have accident. This coming year, you will not have accident. There are people that will try to distract your attention. They are not going anywhere. They stay here, they stay there, they stay here, they stay there. Where you find them in January, that is where they still are in May. They will be beckoning upon you. They will be telling a lot of stories. Don't look at anybody. Center your focus, your eyes on where you are going. Any noise, block your ears. Any distraction, close your eyes to them. The way to excellence. The path to excellence. You will not stop your journey halfway. You will get there. Point one, tell me. The point of entry. Point two, tell me. The path to excellence. Point number three. The partnership for exploits. You and Jesus, you are in the majority. No boat can sink if Jesus is in that boat. And there is no life that will be destroyed if Jesus is in that life. He will hold your hand. You'll be in partnership with him. Every day will be a day of exploits. Number one, the point of entry. Number two, the path to excellence. Number three, the partnership for exploits. Which is the point of entry? Is the point where you realize where you have been, you don't have the sufficiency of everything. As you are 
with yourself alone, without God, without Christ, without grace, without salvation, without peace of mind, without a future, you have been struggling all alone by yourself. You have struggled for long. And yet you are not hitting. You are not getting water where you are digging. It is time for you to understand. The treasure is in that chamber. And Jesus has the key. He says, I am the door. By me, if anyone will enter in, he will find pasture. He says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. I am the way to true life. He says, why are you outside there? He says, come in. For all things are ready. All your prosperity is in the hand of Christ. Your protection in the hands of Christ. Your possibilities in life in the hands of Christ. And he says, why are you outside there? There's darkness outside. There's danger outside. There's insecurity outside. That is a Satan that is walking about seeking who may be devoured. The thief comes not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I am come. I came for you. That you might have life. And that you might have that life more abundantly. Why are you still waiting outside? Why don't you say, this is my day. This is my point of entry. He says, I'm standing at your door and I'm knocking. I come to bless you. Have you looked at all the people that Jesus touched when he was here? He never hurt anybody. He never condemned anybody. He never drove anybody away. He never put a bad stigma on anybody. What he was the most the most common word he said. Come. 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 And that's what he's still saying today. Why will you not be wise? While Jesus is calling you. And he's saying this is the point of entry. Leave that darkness outside and come to the light. He is the light of the world. Life is bitter without Christ. But Jesus Christ makes your life better. That's why he's calling you. And he says, you must take this first step at the point of entry. 